today. <clears throat> everybody is going to learn how to sample hay, everybody that's present. So we will uh, talk about how to take a sample, what to take a sample with, and what to do with that sample. I've got two samples of hay here. The browner or more tan bale is a bale of pure alfalfa. The bale on the left, this bale, which has more green in it, and a little hard for you to see, but it has more grass in it as well, is an alfalfa orchard grass bale. Both of these came from the same farm in Hart County, Kentucky. This farm raises cash hay, or raises hay for cash hay sales, uh, and has cows to take care of the hay that doesn't get put up in such a way that it's gonna be commercially marketable. So what I wanna do today uh, in this little short segment is to demonstrate how to take a sample. Now a sample is gonna be 15 to 20 cores of random bales in a lot of hay. A lot of hay is a bunch of hay or a group of hay or bales of hay that have been cut and managed and handled and stored the same. One of the things that's crucial whenever we're trying to put up hay in season and then think about how we're gonna take a sample is to place the hay in such a way that you can get to various cuttings that you know or expect to be different. Because when it comes time to feed out, uh, you typically want to be able to get to the best hay during midwinter. Some of the lesser quality hay, you wanna feed maybe on the front end or, or maybe the very back end of the hay season. It depends on your livestock situation, but you want to be able to pick the right hay for the nutritional needs uh, of the livestock at the time you're gonna feed it. So what I'm going to sample with is a core sampler with a battery powered electric grill attached to it. This sampler is actually one of my favorites. It has a, a coring tube. It has a, a rod that shoves the sample back into the storage container. And one of the things I like most about it is that it has this storage container. So I can take 15 or 20 cores collect them all together and only have to, to empty the canister one time. So I'm gonna take three or four cores out of each bale and then empty that into a plastic bag that we will send off for analysis uh, and talk about when we get into the section on hay and interpreting hay quality. So if you'll just uh, bear with me while I um, take these samples and then put them in plastic bags, that's gonna be the, the first thing we do in class today. But in case you're not in class, you can go back and review this video and hopefully gain most of the value that you would have had you been in class today. With this rod, I oftentimes stick it in my back pocket too, so I don't lose it. Uh, I have left it on bales and stuck in bales before uh, and it is fairly frustrating to then uh, get back to the truck, back to the car uh, and be putting your stuff away and forget where this little rod is. And without this rod, this sampler is not much good. So let me adjust the angle of this camera just a bit. All right, so I'm gonna start with the pure alfalfa bale. Okay, so got one core, and then I will take this, push it back in. Two. and three. I'm gonna take four cores out of this bale and four out of the other one 
and we will then stop. I'll save some of the battery for the class to use today. Okay, there's four cores. Now, if we were sampling a whole barn full, we would have gone around and did, done 15 or so or more bales, depending on how big the lot was, how much, how many bales are in the, that group of hay. Now I'm gonna break the sample probe apart. And break, hopefully not the word I'll use here, but has a little locking ring that lets me then detach the canister and then place it in plastic bag. And if I'm not too clumsy today, I won't dump it all over the floor. Okay. There you go. There is a sample ready to go to the lab. Now it's important when we send a sample to the lab that we send the whole sample. You can tell that there is a fair amount of fine material, maybe you can, at the bottom of the sample. There you go, real finely ground. Now that is the leaves and that is the highest quality material in the sample. So you don't want to subdivide the sample. You wanna send it all. Certified labs will have a technique where they will take a subsample, but retain the parts of the, the sample that they need. So that's our sample of pure alfalfa. We will take that to the lab and then get the numbers back. It's important to send samples to a reputable laboratory that's certified by an agency such as the National Forage Testing Association, who will send out check samples throughout the year to make sure that the uh, lab is actually uh, running the samples correctly and achieving uh, uniform and repeatable results. So this will cost about all oh, around $20 plus shipping. And we will get the results in about a week once I get them in the mail. So I am going to make a sample or sample the other bale as well, but uh, this will be the end of what, what I would call the formal sampling uh, video. So enjoy. We'll talk about this hay when we uh, get back to uh, interpreting hay analysis and, and, and probably bring it out when we talk about uh, evaluating hay and the physical qualities of hay. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, you'll notice I, I sampled the bales from the, the end and that's very important. If we were sampling a round bale, we'd want to sample it from the round side because that lets you penetrate the layers and get a good representative sample of that bale. Thank you very much. Another very important part of taking a hay sample is labeling the bag correctly. You would be surprised uh, what the things that you think you will remember that you won't. Uh, so this one is from Clayton Gerald's farm. Uh, this is a sample of alfalfa orchard grass and I've abbreviated ALF-OG. Uh, it's important when you send a sample off to the lab, especially for NIR analysis to let them know what is in the sample because they have to choose the, the equation to predict the results based on what you tell them the composition is. In other words, a pure grass sample, they have another, they have a different equation to predict the results of this sample uh, of, of a grass sample compared to this alfalfa orchard grass. And most likely there's a different sample than a different equation for the alfalfa. And the way that the, the NIR samples work or the NIR instrument works is it takes uh, spectra from a, a finely ground scanned sample and it compares it to a wet chemistry database. And that's where you need to make sure you, you're comparing it to the right database. So we wanna compare this alfalfa spectra from the NIR instrument 
to the database of wet chemistry results for other alfalfa samples. Likewise, for the alfalfa orchard grass. <laughs>